our hands together and just give the Lord a clap of praise in the house before I pray. The children will be here, are, are coming to worship with us this morning. Would you welcome them as well? Thank you. Lift your hands with me as I pray. Our Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise your name. We thank you, O oh God, that you inhabit our praise. So, Father, we just commit our body, soul, and spirit unto you today. Be glorified in us and through us, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, everybody.
everything he does, everything he says, everything he is, is perfection. He is perfect. So if you're here this morning and some things don't seem to be working out just right, trust in him. Trust in him. He is perfect in all his ways. All his dealings, all his thoughts, all of his provisions are perfect. Can we just pray together this morning? Father, we thank you that you are perfect in all of your ways. Everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you are regarding our lives and the lives of those around us, Father, you are perfect in every way. And so, Father, I pray, oh God, this morning that as we worship you and we acknowledge your perfection and who you are, Father, we pray, oh God, that we would put our trust in you so that the things that are around us that don't seem to add up, but you are working behind the scenes. You are making things to happen behind the scenes that we can't see right now with our eyes, but we trust you. We trust your provision. We trust your word. We trust who you are, Father. We trust your presence. We trust who you are today and that you have nothing that's ill toward us, but you have every good thought that's geared towards us, that's focused towards us. And so, Father, I thank you, oh God, this morning that we can rest in confidence in knowing that you are in control and that you have everything under control. And so, Father, we thank you for that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't God good this morning? Hallelujah, it's so good to see you. Thank you for coming to BCF this morning. For those of you watching on live stream, thank you for joining us. For those of you that are here in the house this morning, why not take a few seconds, greet each other, and say, God bless you this morning. It is so good to see you nice and warm. Hallelujah. saw this morning we did have the children here we did have the children here with us this morning if you have a child and you want to take them downstairs for um, children's ministries this morning that's great you can do that you have that option to do that this morning as well also let me ask you to take out your smartphone or your tablet whichever you have connected to a data plan check in at on BCF uh, at BCF rather on social media so that your friends can know where they are, where, where you are, and where they can be. 
They can come with us and join us here in person, or they can watch us live streaming on our website, which is bcfchurch.net. And again, if you do post with regards to BCF Church, we do ask that you use the, the hashtag BCF Brampton. And uh, if you're not sure what that is exactly, when you go out through the main doors here, turn quickly to your left and you'll see a selfie background which has the hashtag there and you can use that. Also, uh, pull out your connection card in the seat back in front of you. There's an offering envelope and there's a connection card inside of that. Fill in the front side so that we have as much information that we need to stay in contact with you to let you know what's happening. The ushers do have some extra copies and some pens for you if you need, an ex if you need one or if you need a pen to fill it out. And also on the reverse side this week, I will... Our memory verse for today is in there, and I'm interested in some opportunities for you to be involved at BCF, and an opportunity for you to share your praise reports and your prayer request with us so that we can believe with you and rejoice when, with you when the praise report starts to change. Amen? Thank you so much. God bless you this morning. Let me invite Dr. Harrison and Pastor Kathleen for Family Focus. Amen. Why don't we put those hands together and bless the Lord this morning? Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Regardless of the snow, it's really great to be in the presence of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord there is? Amen. Well, we want to take you right into family focus this morning and today we want to talk to you about clean that cut. Can you say that with me? Clean that cut. All right. Most of us probably in, in some time or the other have gotten wounded by maybe a cut or a bruise and sometimes it depends on the severity of that cut. It can be very painful, Right? All of us may, may have know what pain is all about. Well, when we have a cut, whether it's a bruise or a cut, the first thing that comes to your mind is we need to clean it out. We need to wash it out. And sometimes in our mind, we may think, you know, like when you're washing it out, what is the purpose of it? Ultimately, the purpose is not to get rid of the pain. The purpose is to clean it up so it won't get infected. And a lot of times... Sometimes cuts get infected because there are particles in there that causes infection. The goal is to clean it out, and within about a couple days, you'll notice that the, the cut will start healing. And we know who our healer is. Jesus, right? He's our healer. And so as the cuts start getting healed, you'll notice the pain will disappear. And within a week or two weeks, the pain will be less. About a month, there'll be no more pain. It'll be totally healed. The outcome will be you'll see a scar, but there wouldn't be any cut left and no more pain. Isn't that true? Yes. Well, now think about it in an emotional way, in a psychological way. From time to time, we get wounded in our minds and our emotions. We get wounded uh, psychologically by maybe words that are very painful. In fact, I was reading an article where most people who are hurt psychologically are from words that are spoken to them on a negative level from an early childhood as they're growing older. Sometimes we get betrayed, sometimes we lose a job, maybe we have a bad report from the doctor. Whatever the circumstances may be, those affect our emotions. And as a result, we, we, we stay in that realm where we kind of get attached to that wound. But what we need to learn is that we need to find a way of cleaning out the emotions just like we do physically with a cut in order for us to be psychologically healed. That the long-term process is that you'll be able to see the scar but not the pain that happened when the incident took place, when that word was spoken to you. Now, the negative to it is sometimes we get numb to a cut and we learn how to, grow, how to live with the pain and we put up the, this defense mechanism and in relationship we see it over and over again where couples bring baggages into their marriage or even with their children. And instead of learning how to work through the problem, we get stuck and we put on a numbness. But today, we have a solution and those solution is we need to focus on cleaning out the emotional cut in order for us to be healed totally. That we can have a scar and remember the scar, but it would not be painful. So we have a couple tips for you today. So in that process. You need to be true to yourself. You need to know that uh, you owe it to yourself to be healed when you're wounded, that it is possible. You need to have that in your mind, that it is possible. And if, if it's very hard for you to do, or you're not able to find the support within your friends, it's okay to seek out 
professional help if you do need to, to have that help in order to move ahead. Number two is the pain will only last if the healing does not take place. So we need to learn how to clean out those emotional wounds and allow the healing process to begin. The healing cannot begin until we start doing something about it. And number three, and this is my favorite point here, you know, every wound or every scar has a story. And, but once you are healed, once you see that healing process happen, you can use it to help others. You can use it to help bless others because you're going to be able to share that with others and say, hey, look, if this happened to me, it can happen for you as well. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. So let's welcome Pastor Randy and Pastor Jill as they come. Amen. God bless you. so much. Good to see you. You enjoyed the snow this morning, is that right? Just about a nice freshness to the air, all those kind of things. Now, on the seat when you came in, it should have been a little uh, seat flyer like this one. Did I have it right? Side? Okay, there it is. This is for the Easter weekend. Now, when is Easter? You're not sure. Three weeks away. Okay, so it's not far from now. Next week is the 7th, and then the 14th, a Palm Sunday, and then Easter Sunday. And so we have a very special uh, weekend planned for that, and I want you to take uh, note of that. Carry this home with you. Put it on your fridge or something where you won't forget about it. Tell others as well. And uh, on the Friday, we have a dra dramatic presentation that will touch people's hearts, we know, at 10 in the morning and then again in the evening. And what we've set up is so that you can actually get some tickets. There'll be some at the back on your way out that you can take a ticket with you, and then you can invite a friend and actually give them a ticket as the invitation. So you know uh, my dear friend Marcus here and Casey and others, uh, Brianne and others are have been busy after each of our Sunday morning services working with the, the cast that are involved in that. So it is going to be an excellent time for us to put our faith out for many people to come in and find Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then on the back side is about Easter Sunday. It says, why should I care about Easter? And we're going to be asking people to send us questions on why we should care about Easter. And so you'll be able to participate uh, with that uh, online uh, here coming up in the future. So it's the last Sunday. What do we do the last Sunday of the month? Birthdays and anniversaries. All right. Who had a birthday during the month of March. Can I see your hand? Just wave at us, birthday. Stand up, please. And one of the first ones on his feet is Pastor Marvin all the way from Thailand. Look at that. They just got in. Marvin and Anna just got in last night, 10 at 10, 30 at night, and they're here in the morning. A wedding anniversary as well. If you had a wedding anniversary, please stand up. Yeah, both of you, yes. That's good. Praise the Lord. Good, 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 good. Well, why don't we stretch our hands out towards these. Jill, would you lead us, please? Father, we thank you for life. We thank you that as these ones are standing, Father, you are giving them a new year you, to walk in your goodness, to walk in your statutes, that your word will come alive inside of them in new ways. Father, thank you for the birthdays. Thank you, Father, that you allow us to live and give honor and glory to your name. For the anniversaries, Father, we bless you. We praise you for the covenant of marriage. We thank you, Father, that you hold the answers for each and everything we face. So, Father, bless them this year. Let your wisdom rest upon them. Let your counsel rise up inside them. And let them bless your name as they live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And, Father, we also pray for the students that are coming to the end of a semester, especially college, university ones, finishing up all of the details. We just pray for great Jesus. peace to pour into them as they're diligent. We pray, Father, that you'd help them to remember what they've learned. Holy Spirit, bring it back to their mind. We pray, Lord, that you would just shower them with your presence wherever they are so that they can finish strong yes, and move ahead into careers or into a great summer uh, with you and with us here at BCF. Thank you for them. Amen. Amen. Received good report about a young man named Paul, who's Pearl Bernard's son, who we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, went through about a 15-hour surgery. And so he is now home, recovering well. 
So thank you for praying. Keep praying. Never stop. See, we keep, we keep on lifting one another up. Is that true? And so if you need prayer, that's why we have the connection cards. That's one of the, the uh, focuses for them. So don't hesitate to fill that in even now. And just put your prayer request in there. If you have a praise report of what God has done, then we want to celebrate with you as well. So please, please do take care of that. You notice um, Casey wasn't on stage today. She's uh, getting ready for the last performance of, uh, at the Rose Theater. And so they'll be, she'll be back with us next week and enjoying that. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give to God today? How, how many are ready? One, two, oh, lots of you are. Okay, so let me, let me tell you what we're going to do. We'll use the uh, tithe and offering envelope that's in the seat back in front of you. So just pull it out if you would, please, and uh, we'll make use of that. And if you're writing a check, just use the initials BCF. That's easy for us all. And if you want to give by debit or credit card, you can do that out in the foyer afterward. We have a couple kiosks there that you can use for your convenience I love to use the, the text to give, and uh, so let me just get my phone. They'll put it up on the screen for us uh, so that we have, have the, the number there. There it is. So while you finish your preparation, I will have some music, please. Thank you. You're fast today. Why don't you lift up your offering envelope to the Lord? And uh, let me pray. Father, such a privilege to give to you. Our purpose is to advance your kingdom, to honor you, to thank you for what you put in our hands. And so, Lord, would you receive these tithes brought to you, the offerings presented to you? And would you multiply their effectiveness, please? so that they accomplish much, much more than the actual dollar value would indicate. And then, Lord, bless each one that gives today. And if there's one or two here that just don't have finances to give, we ask that you'd put some in their hand this week, that they'd be able to reserve a portion to bring back to you next time we're together. So bless them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, would you please serve? Thank you. for your generosity. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, helping us. Thank you. You may have received an email this morning. In fact, if you did not receive an email this morning from us at BCF Church, uh, please make sure you put your email address on the connection card and just circle it so we'll know you didn't get it. But that, we, we used to print off, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of paper bulletins that we would find on the floor after the service and out in the parking lot, knowing that many of you took them home, but some uh, found they, they didn't need them. So instead, we've now sent an email, and on that email, it, uh, it has our e-bulletin. And so I want to encourage you to, to glance through it. You'll see there's a message from Jill and I in it. There's also other things, including about the Easter weekend, and I mentioned some tickets that you can pick up afterward but you can actually register just by clicking on that uh, colored box that you should be able to see on the screen there. And it takes it right into what we call as our, our 
church management system that lets you put your email in there or your phone number, and it should pop up with the rest of your information. You may have to register first time, and you can actually sign up and register for it, and it, I got my confirmation in about two or three seconds, actually. It sent me an email back. So you can do that and make, uh, make use of that so that we can know that everybody's coming along with us on that Easter weekend. Wednesday night, you started. I did. I started doing a 10-week series on faith, and thank you all that came out. And uh, we're continuing this week. Last week was like the introduction, so if you weren't able to come, come this week, and we are going to start working practically. So I'm not just one that wants to teach you knowledge. I want to give you something that you can use practically every day. So this week, we're going to start working on faith projects and believe, actually believing God to see things happen as his word is declared and stand upon his promises and see the power of God move on our behalf together. That sounds good. Yeah. So again, we've, we've started Bible school classes here. And for those that want to get credit for that, there will be provision to be able to do that that we'll tell you more about as uh, on Wednesday night. Jill will take care of that. But we've been teaching a series called 2020 Vision, okay? We're still there. So grab your Bible, turn it on, please, or open it up. And we're going to go to the book of uh, Deuteron Deuteronomy. And uh, that's the fifth book in the Bible. If you want to get there, you go to the front and count back. And we're going to share in chapter 28. But before I get there, I just want to do a little bit of a recap for some that may be here for the first time. And we started off a few weeks ago looking at who God is. We need 2020 vision. We need to see clearly who God is. God is a benevolent God. He loves us. He is all powerful. He's our creator, but we are created in his image. And so we then we need to see who he is and we need to see who we are. We are created in his image. We are ones that he's chosen to be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He spoke all these things in the word of God so that we would be able to see ourselves as joint heirs in Jesus Christ, not as worms, sinners crawling around the ground, but we would see ourselves as God's chosen people who he loves very much. Is that you? Are you loved by God? Absolutely you are. So, so we need to see ourselves that way. And then we, we move beyond that to see how our thinking needs to be there and, and how God doesn't want us to be anxious, be anxious with nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests be known unto God. So we start to understand that we don't need to subscribe to the anxiety of the day that we live in. And then we talked about health and strength and, and how our physical bodies are something God wants to, to heal as well as our minds, and, and that's kind of where we went so far. But now this week, we're taking a, one step further, and we're going to look at, uh, at how God thinks and what he sees and wants us to see about provision, about, about the finances, about the things he places in our hands about how we are to interact with these things that God trusts us with. So let's, uh, uh, what, I, you, you're in, Deut how many found Deuteronomy? Good, okay, this side, are you looking still? Okay, good, I'll give you a break. And so in Psalm 103, which was our, our foundational verse for this series, we started off, and you can say it with me, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that, that is within, within me, Bless his holy name. Then comes, and bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So that's, we want to talk about those benefits, and we've already addressed some of them, but today we're going to talk about the one that involves stewardship. Can you say that word? Stewardship, okay? And so God wants us to have very clear vision on his plan for what we do with what he puts in our hands. He trusts us with it, so then we want to be good stewards, and I'm going to read a large portion of Scripture, and if you found Deuteronomy 28, we're going to start at verse 1 and read all the way through 16, so follow with me. And remember, this was Moses speaking to the children of Israel, the whole tribe, the whole, the whole group there, all the tribes, 
And how does that apply to us? Well, we are grafted into that uh, same relationship with God that he had planned for them. So we are not Israelites. I'm not saying that. We're not Jewish people. No, no, that's not where we're going. But we are the children of the living God brought in through Jesus Christ. So now, verse 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Does that sound good so far? Okay, let me continue then. You will, uh, your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and bread boards will be blessed. Whatever, wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction and then they'll scatter from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord will bless you in the land he's giving you. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as his holy people as he swore he would do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe of you. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, blessing you with children, numerous livestock, and abundant crops. Now, you don't have to have livestock at home to say yes to this, okay? It's, it's the different culture now. Then verse 12, the Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You'll always be on top and never at the bottom. Look at verse 14 and 15. You must not turn away from any of these commandments I'm giving you today, nor follow after other gods and worship them. But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all of these curses will come upon you, overwhelm you. Don't read any further. You get to the curses then. So it's an, is this conditional? This promise from God is conditional upon our obedience. So, Father, help us today. Open our eyes that we may see things the way you see them. Help us, Lord, to be able to be good stewards. That's what you've called us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. So God owns everything and wants us to be blessed as his children. So just look up to verse 12 there in Deuteronomy 28. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to the land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow from them. God wants to help us to be good stewards of what he's given us. Many times we think we own everything and we want to hold on to it. But God wants us to understand that he is the one that gives us all things. In Deuteronomy 10, 14, look the highest heavens and earth and everything in it belong to the Lord your God. 1 Corinthians 10, 26, for the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. Psalm 115, 16, the heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift comes from above, the Father of lights. In him there is no turning. God has given us stewardship over everything he has given. And he wants us to understand that he has made this world for our good pleasure. But many times we hold on to things. We want it for ourselves. We want to make sure we have enough. And we don't understand the plan and purpose of God because we don't open our heart to what he really has for us. But he is helping us to understand 
that if we will be good stewards of what he gives us, there will never be lack in our life. There will be not, not need because he will take care of us because he is a loving father that cares for everything concerning you. He says in his word that he has given you everything concerning your life and godliness. That means that whatever we need, he is gonna provide if we follow the word he has given us, if we obey what he says. Those verses Pastor read in, in Deuteronomy, that if we obey what the Lord has laid out, that he will help us. You know, some people want to say, well, you know, the Old Testament died away. But I tell you, my Bible says that Jesus came not just to fulfill the law, but to do even greater than what was written. So if we obey what the law has, his blessing is upon us. And then if we add to that what Jesus has done, there is a greater blessing that will come. So we can't say just parts of the Bible. We take the whole word of God. And as we obey the whole word of God, his blessing comes upon us because he wants to help us. So we need to look at what's the difference between ownership and stewardship. How many like Smarties? Have you ever given a child a box of Smarties and say, here, share this with your brother or sister? <laughs> the one you gave it to, are they good stewards or do they own it? They think they want to own it. Sometimes it's the same thing with us. Look at the screen here. Ownership, exclusive rights and control over property. And so that's what, uh, that's what the king said in Babylon. Uh, sometimes we forget and we think because God has put things in our hands, we own it. Friends, we don't own it. You're not going to take it with you when you leave this earth. Is that right? I, I, w I was going to ask a question. How many of you have a storage uh, <laughs> container? Uh, what do they call it? Storage unit, but storage I, won't, unit. I won't ask that question. Because often we have a storage unit where we put all of our precious things that we don't want to lose because they're ours. And when my dad did that, when he died... We did not go to the storage unit, load everything up in a trailer, and put it behind the hearse. In other words, even though he thought he owned it, it really wasn't his. He was just a steward of it while we're alive here on earth. So the same with this. Stewardship is different. What is it? The, the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Can you read that verse uh, 42? Who then is a faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? We focus on ruler as being owner, but really we're just stewards of what God has put in our hands. Wake up your neighbor. Tell him you're, you're a good steward. Tell him now. Speak words of faith over them. You're a good steward. <laughs> We want to be good stewards here at BCF as well, even on inviting friends and family to come with us and be part of receiving from God. Is that true? Has God given us just blessings to have a family like this around us that cares, prays for us, a place where we can come and worship? So we prepared some cards like this, invest and invite cards. This is what it's for. On the back side, there's a place for us to write three names of friends that we're going to pray for between now and Easter. And then we're going to, uh, the front reminds us that we need to invest in the relationships as well as invite them to come with us over the Easter and all the way through to Mother's Day. Like we encourage people to come all the way through to Mother's Day. We trust there will not be snow on Easter but by Mother's Day, it'll probably be gone anyway. So if you want one of these cards, our ushers have them. They're going to pass them out now and, and just pass them down the rows. Thank you so much, ushers, for, for helping us with that. But take, take one for yourself, fill it out, pray, and we'll keep praying for them. And, and, and while that's happening, let me go on. Second point is God promises to provide for us. Is that true? He really does. I like the way Jesus spoke. Now imagine Jesus on a hillside overlooking the Sea of Galilee, 
and he's talking to people, and they just keep gathering till he's got a whole multitude of people, like 5,000 people there, all kinds of people there, and now he's talking to them, and look at, listen to what he says. He said, if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers, they could see them, right? So this was visual for them, that are here today and thrown in the, <coughs> thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? What these things that uh, dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all you need. Seek first the kingdom, or seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for... Today, how many know that, uh, that phrase, don't worry, be happy? <laughs> I used to have a button that I got from one of the, the stores that I would push, but I've lost it, unfortunately. And it sang the song and said, don't worry, be happy. And so is that what God wants for us? Well, first part, yes, don't worry, be happy. Uh, trust in the Lord as well, and then he'll help you. But when, you know, Jill's already explained very well on how God wants to bless us, is helping us, puts things in our hands, takes care of us in each season of life. But what happens when things go off the rail? What happens when problems come that you can't just overcome easily? What what happens when uh, when you have a car and you have an accident and they write the car off? How many have ever had that happen? Yeah, me too. And then what do you do? Well, you know the insurance is going to give you a little bit of money for it, but you want something that's going to last you for a while. So, so one of our friends uh, went, and, and he went to the bank and, and tried to kind of consolidate a mortgage and other things to put it together. And guess what the bank said? No. So what do you do when that happens? Do you get mad at God? Do you complain? Do you get mad at the bank? Do you get mad at yourself? No, you trust the Lord that he's got a better idea. And so many times, and and I've seen this so many times over and over, pray with me, Pastor, that I'll get this loan for, for this nice car. But often, it's not that car that we need. We need a reliable car. So what happened is I got a... Uh, when I came in first thing in the morning one day this week, uh, the, the family the gentleman came and said, Pastor, I, I want you to come pray for my car. And so we went out and we prayed for his new-to-him car. Did you catch that? Yes. It doesn't have to... You can buy new car smell that you spray inside, okay? Yes. It doesn't have to be brand new to you. <laughs> but then I, I prayed over his, his uh, BMW SUV that now has no payments on it. Isn't Jesus good? Yes. See, when you're a steward, you're not looking to see beyond what is appropriate for you, but you're willing to trust God. Yeah. We either whine about things or we believe. But what happens if you're uh, an employee, a dad in a household, and uh, uh, life is going ahead, your kids are growing up, one's going to college very soon, and, and now things change. Uh, Richard, why don't you come? And Suzanne, you're going to come or you're going to say, you're going to watch. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> She's going to cheer Richard on from behind. But uh, that's the type of thing. This is Richard Nurse. Put your hands together for him. Bless you, my friend. He's a, a, a great uh, friend and uh, part of the family and actually the treasurer of our church board. Tell us what happened to you, Rich. So two plus years ago, I received some, uh, some news the company that I had faithfully served for uh, 15 plus years told me that my services were no longer needed. And so it was a body blow, uh, a punch in the dark, and left me disoriented. How many would feel the same way? Be honest, yeah. When when it's it's a shock to your system, it's like, what's going on? Absolutely. So what do you do next? Yeah. Well, uh, being a, a father, a husband, I first conferred with my wife. Is that a good what, thing? Uh, we should do. Don't pretend you're going to work every day. 
and come home. <laughs> and at the end of the month, there's no paycheck. And she says, where did it all go? <laughs> be honest, be upfront, share your trials with, your, with the one God's brought to you. And so I started a job search. And that Wait, job... Stop for a second. Did you pray? Do you have faith? Well, like, tell us about the faith walk. Absolutely. So I didn't know initially what God had in store. And so it, I, I needed to step out in faith. So I believed for a job, and so I looked. I sent out resumes, did the practical things, and there was one disappointment after another. How many have ever had that happen? People say, yep, you're the best candidate for this. We're going to get back to you, and then? Nothing. I must say those were stinging uh, disappointments. Did you lose your faith? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> we talked during some of this time and prayed together, so I, I know where so, you've been. So, so here is what uh, happened. Um, well into the journey, uh, there was a strong prophetic word, uh, first off. And uh, then there was a, a particular scripture that sustained me uh, from 1 Corinthians 10, that uh, no trial has uh, no, no, no temptation or no trial who sees you that is uncommon to man. And God will make a way. Always make a way. Always God make a way. Yeah. And so every time I felt like I was at a breaking point, I'd be assured that God wouldn't allow anything to come my way to break me. Amen. And so that, that sustained and, and kept me. So did your wife join in faith with you? She certainly did. <laughs> and uh, we, you know, looked at what we had and how best to manage it. Now, we were managing it before, but this was a different set of circumstances. And so uh, we tightened our belts. Well, I did mine. <laughs> <laughs> sold your house, sold the car, had to get rid of everything. No. Well, you know, in, in God's uh, plan for us as a couple... We had uh, long decided, even before our children were born, that we would live on one income. And so we weren't necessarily saving for a rainy day, but God had situated, situated us and put us in a place that we were able to cope when the hardship come, came because we had been saving and setting aside finances for we didn't know exactly what. We were investing and so forth. And so when that time came, um, it, 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 it was somewhat, the journey was somewhat easier. But as a man, I wanted to be at work. Yes. Yeah. So what were your next steps? What did you do? So my next steps were to, uh, to study and prepare. And in, in, in my own situation, the company that employed me, I had already started out in uh, embracing and studying and, and using a new technology. And so out of God's plan, uh, an opportunity came to begin to teach. Well, I'd never taught before, and so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Can I stop you for a sec? Last month, we started uh, the pastor's mentor night, and, and so we taught about spiritual gifts and the motivational gifts that are there. And, and so Richard, along with many others, uh, did a motivational gift test online, and I got the results. And uh, the, the top two of uh, your gifts were giving... And teaching. And teacher. But he never taught. I'd never taught before. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, with the door open, even though I felt uncertain, I stepped in, I walked in to that door. And uh, it has been a, a joy... Uh, to uh, teach architects and engineers how to build solutions in the cloud. Something I never thought I'd ever do. And so that door, walking into that door, has led to even other opportunities to the point where just recently I registered a company. And yeah. as I've done that, uh, even more doors are being opened. <laughs> and, and so, you know, there's going to be some time before they bear fruit. But I am happy uh, with my journey. It wasn't an easy journey. Yeah. Um, and I thank God for not just my wife, but brothers and sisters here 
It's good to be in a strong fellowship, good to be among faith people, and, uh, and, and, and good to know that you have the backing of heaven and prayer support. So did you tell everybody about your situation? No. Who did you tell? I, well, yourself. I, I have a close uh, network of uh, friends. Uh, I shared with them. Talk to people of faith? All the time. <laughs> and, and, and it's what I heard that helped me keep moving on. Yeah. And the strong prophetic utterance is just broke things wide open. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Put your hands together. Thank you so much, Richard. Praise God. So there's practical things that we need to do. It's, it's not just about believing God. Trials come, and sometimes they come. Like, I've heard it said, why, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, sometimes we interpret them as bad things, and sometimes they are. But often God uses them to springboard you into what he has for you for a future mm -hmm. that's even better. So, so understand God's promises to provide for us. Because where we sow, we will also reap. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. Some people think of that as only spiritual things. But as we are seeking God for our life, for every day, God cares about what you do every day of your life. He doesn't just care about the times you're sitting reading his word. He cares about everything concerning you. And as we seek him in that, he can guide us. He can lead us. He can help us understand what we're to do with our life. And the, the ownership becomes stewardship as we recognize what I have in my hands is what God has given me. I can only tell you about my life. And I can only share from my life. And as an eight-year-old girl, my pastor came to visit one day. And he brought some boxes with him. And he would sometimes come over because... My dad would fix lots of things at the church, so he'd come and say, you know, Don, we need those stairs fixed. And, and so daddy would say, okay, pastor, I'll go fix the stairs. And, and so I didn't usually hang around. But this day, my mom told me to come in the living room and sit down. And the pastor told me that these boxes were for me. And he was putting me to work at my first job. Now, I'm eight years old. I'm not looking for work. My work was peeling potatoes, making my bed, going to school. I wasn't looking for a job. I didn't know I should be looking for a job. But my pastor decided that he had a job for me. Inside those boxes were greeting cards. And he wanted me to sell these greeting cards. And he told me that when I sold them, that I would bring 10% of what I made and give it to God. Then I would pay for what the greeting cards cost from the store. And then whatever was left was mine to do with as I wanted. Well, I didn't know any different. So I did what he said. And at the end, I brought my tithes to God. I paid what it cost the wholesale for those cards. And the remainder was mine. And, you know, most eight-year-old girls, you know, they might want a doll or, you know, something like that. I wanted a hymn book. And I wanted a hymn book like they had at church. But our church hymn books were green, and I thought they were ugly. <laughs> I wanted a white hymn book. And so I took that money, and they took me to the place, and I bought my white hymn book. Now, I still have that hymn book today. But you see, what I'm telling you is that I learned as an eight-year-old girl, it's not about how much you have. It's about honoring God. And I learned as an eight-year-old girl that if I would give the tithe to God first, then pay my bill, and then take what was left, God would bless my life. <laughs> because God knows what the desires of your heart is. And he wants to help us to understand. 
You know, the verses in Malachi chapter 3 says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse so there will be enough room in my temple. If you do this, says the Lord, the heaven's armies will open the windows of heaven on your behalf, and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't be able to make room for it. Try it. Put me to the test, God says. It's the only scripture where God says, put me to the test. Try this. Because his word works. His word will not return void. His word will always bring blessing to our life when we honor what his word says. And as we bring to God what is due. Did you hear the story about the pastor? He came and he said, I've got good news and bad news for you today. The good news is we've got enough money to do the project we want to do. The bad news, the money is in your pocket. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was very good. <laughs> Offering time. <Okay. laughs> so God wants to help us. He wants us to understand we are stewards of everything he's given us. And by faith, we can operate with what he has given us and know that he will bless our life. And know that his blessing is upon us. You know, a few years back when we were pastoring out west, we had a lady in our church. And um, her husband didn't come to church. They lived on the First Nations Reserve. And uh, she started to grow in faith. She started to grab hold of God's word. And she started to tithe and give offerings. And at the end of the year, her husband wasn't real happy about when he found out all she had given to the church and, and, and how generous she had been. But when they did their income tax, he got very happy. And he said to her, make sure you give to the church this year. <laughs> you know, God is amazing. Yes. He has set things up to bless us. And as we honor him, his blessings come. He wants us to understand. 2 Corinthians 9, 5 says, So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be a willing gift. Paul's talking here. Can you imagine? It'd be like the pastor sending the deacons ahead or the other pastors ahead to knock on your door and say, have you got the gift for the church ready? That's what Paul did. Be there Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> but you notice scared. he said, we want a willing gift. We don't want gifts that you begrudge giving. We don't want gifts that you don't think you should have to give. We want you to willingly give, Paul said. Not one giving grudgingly. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves the person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over for others to share. Isn't that what God wants for us all? He wants us to have a heart of generosity. He wants to, he's already given us so much, but he wants to help us to learn to be good stewards. And what does that mean? It means we receive, we earn more, we have more coming in than going out. We don't try to live bigger than what, our, than what we can afford. We try to live within our, we, we determine by faith to live within our means. That's what Richard and Suzanne decided before they even had children. And their oldest is heading off to university in the, in the, in the fall. And so it's a lifestyle. It's not an event that we move because God has moved on our heart or somebody's talked to us. So couples, talk together. Decide what you need to do. A number of years ago, we decided to go to one car. Well, sometimes that's not convenient. So when it's not convenient, we rent a car. And then it, it costs us much less than having two cars. So we, everyone figures out what works in their particular situation. It's not about just giving to God. It's about understanding the principle, having clear vision 
that we are all stewards, good stewards, to be good stewards of what God puts in our hands. Regardless of how much we come in, that comes mm -hmm. in, we need to be good stewards of that. Can I tell the story? Tell it quick. Quick. Yep. I got lots of great stories. I know, you got one minute. <laughs> but, you know, year, years ago, uh, actually last week, I was with some people, and, and, and this couple was telling a story about a missionary couple that had been in Ethiopia for many years. And as they were telling the story, I realized they were talking about a couple we knew and helped go to Africa many years ago. And when they went, they were going to an area that, that didn't have a lot of things, and it would be hard for them to get some things. And I just felt they were taking three little kids with them, and I just felt so strongly to give them my washer and dryer. And um, we packed the crate, you know, the, the crates that was being shipped, and I can still remember the joy I had giving them my washer and dryer, not knowing where my next one was coming from, but just knowing that God put on my heart to give them that. Well, last week as this couple were talking, they said they'd just been with them and they were reminiscing and they were talking about what were the things that blessed you, that sent you to Africa and kept you there. And Val said, the thing that blessed me, one of the things that blessed me most was somebody gave me a washer and dryer. Now, this is like 30 years later. Now, many times we give and we don't hear how the person is blessed. We don't know what happens. But sometimes God comes along after the fact and he lets you know that what you did was a blessing. Yes. He lets you know so that you can keep giving, so that you don't hold on. But the key to it all was, I didn't know where my next washer and dryer was coming from at that time. Just after that, friends of ours that were brand new Christians bought a rental house. And in the rental house, there was a washer and dryer they didn't need. So I got the washer and dryer. <laughs> you see, God knew all along. But sometimes we don't do because we can't figure right. it out. We don't know how it's going to work out. Well, what if I have to suffer a little? Well, so what if we do? Look at how Jesus suffered for us. Yeah. And he never said, oh, I don't know. I don't want to suffer for them. I'll only suffer for Pastor Reed. No, he, he took it all for all of That's us. Right. That's right. So what if we have to give up a little? I know I see Marvin and Annie here, and I could think of the stories they could tell us about living in Thailand and what they've done and how God has blessed as they have continued to give over all these years. I'm telling you today, God is a faithful Amen. God. Don't let fear stop you from obeying God. That's right. Amen. Uh, two, two short points for you. First one is this. We, we encourage everyone, as you've heard, to sow to the vision God has, the church, and, and advancing and, and around the world and how we invest in uh, Thailand and what Marvin and Ann are doing. Any time you can put a special offering in that will go to them. Any, any of those special things where God puts something on your heart, 100% of it goes to the place where you designate it. But also, secondly, so to yourself. So to the vision God has put inside of you for your life. And, and maybe you see yourself as, as a, a businessman doing well. Then so to that. Learn how to do it. Invest in that do, do a, uh, a course. Do something, as, as uh, Richard told us today. He started doing this course and continued, and that's what opened the door to, the, to what's happened now, to the new business that God is launching. Don't just uh, hang on to what you have and think that giving to God does everything. No, we're to sow to the vision God has for our life as well. How many believe that you'd, that you'd like a new car? Three people, okay. Oh, there's more, okay. So then what do you do? Don't spend every nickel you get. Instead, sow to that vision of that new vehicle. Set it aside. Store up the funds for it. When I was in the Philippines just last month, uh, a pastor there had been believing God for a, 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 to build a building. And uh, what did he do? He told me, all we have to spend is 25 million pesos for... Uh, 
uh, and we've, we've found the land. And when I was there, he was signing the paper and paying cash for it. Why? Because he had a vision. He's and they set it. aside the provision for the vision. So it's not just giving more to God to get what you want. Yeah. It's not giving to all the evangelists around that have a good message. It's investing in the vision God's put in your heart as well. Last point is this. Your heart will follow your treasure or your money. Did you catch that? What did I say? Your heart will follow your treasure. Matthew 6, 21, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also go. So therefore, we need to guard our heart above all else, for it determines the course of our life. We need to understand that God wants us to, to receive funds and spend less than we receive so that we can have an inheritance, not just for our children, but for our children's children. That's God's plan for us. But we live in a very materialistic world. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Whatever we watch, the media throws things at us, buy this, buy this, buy this. And so we, uh, let me ask a question. How materialistic are you? Don't answer. <laughs> it's just a rhetorical question. The Bible says we can't serve two masters, God and money, God and mammon. And so what do we do? Well, he also said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, if you long to be rich, you'll be snared. He who loves money, the love of money is what? The root of all evil. It's not money. It's the love of it. So if our heart is loving it, we're pursuing after money, then we're going to lose out. But if we trust God as our source, then it helps us. Let me just show you the last slide that shows a little bit about the mentality that's here now. Often there's a scarcity mentality. I don't have enough. If I only had this, then I would be happy. My, my needs would be met if I only had this. And then what does that do? It makes us want to chase after things instead of chasing after God, instead of trusting Him. And then you discover that the more you have, the more you have, the more you want. So God doesn't want us to do on that. He that trusts in riches shall fall. He wants us to be healthy for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things he possesses. Is that a good verse? We need to put that on our refrigerator, okay? And wealth is not, the focus is not on wealth or things, but it's on God. Now, we trust, we, the more we have a relation with, relationship with God, and the more we honor him and allow him to lead us and guide us, the more he can trust us with finances. Did you catch that? So then, as we focus our heart, our finances in the right place, God helps us. So we can go from a scarcity mentality all the way over to excess. The, the eyes of man are never satisfied. The more you have, the more you chase after, the more you think you need. Now, every culture is different. For us here, there's certain things we need. It's difficult to live without a vehicle in, in our area here. There are other places in the world that aren't like that. Mm -hmm. in, in Africa right now, in Baira, in Mozambique, where the floods are, what is abundance to them is different than what's abundance to us. And so again, we need to share what we have with others far away, but we also need to trust God for what we have here. Can we pray together? Father, thank you so much for your hand upon our lives. I thank you, Father, for trusting us, trusting us as your children to be good stewards. You've given us the insight. You've opened our eyes, not just today, but you've opened our eyes over the years to know that as we put the focus on you, as we listen to your voice, as we have the character of Christ in us, that, Lord, you turn our attention and allow us to receive blessing from you but, Lord, you also help us to grow to be more like you. So help us every day, I pray, to surrender our will to you, to keep the first things first, trusting you, loving you, and moving ahead in life and caring for those around us. Now, Lord, as we start to baptize people, we ask, Lord, again for your anointing to be upon that, that lives continue their life of transformation. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we're going to baptize 
some young people are junior high and high school. So if uh, you're a candidate, if you'd like to come forward, if you want to take pictures, feel free to come around. Some of our children are joining us. Morning, guys. Remember to pick up some of the tickets on your way out today. Your connection card will be collected at the door when you go. But please wait for these children. They're just going to, young people, up. not just children. It's not going to be a long time. In the tank, we have Pastor Jason and we have Brianne, praise God, who's leading on, the girls. junior highs. Come on on stage, please. Everybody up. Thank you, Father. Well, you're Introduce first, yourself, so. okay? Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Gran. Hi, Brad. And how are you today? Oh, good. Why do you want to be baptized? Because I want to serve Jesus in my entire life. Amen. So, because of your faith, Graham, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woohoo! So, we have Ava. Ava, and do you love Jesus? Yes. When did you accept Jesus? I accepted Jesus last year at summer retreat. At summer retreat, parents, send your students to summer retreat. Are you going to serve Jesus all your days? Yes. Amen. So, Ava, because of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember when you got baptized? No? Nobody remembers? I remember. And we have Lipa. And do you love Jesus? Yes. When did you accept Jesus? August 3rd, 2015. Wow. And what happened? How, how did you feel any different? What's happened in your life? I, I felt like more happier. Um, yeah, I, just, I felt more happier. <laughs> and are you going to serve Jesus all your days? Yes. Amen. All right, and Nifei, because of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we have Marissa here. Marissa, when did you accept Jesus? Um, when I went to retreat. Now, are you parents hearing this? Retreats, uh, summer camps are important. They change lives of young people. So what's happening in your life since you accepted Jesus? Well, I have been more happier and been able to handle a lot more things that I couldn't before. Amen. And are you going to serve Jesus all your days? I will. Amen. All right, Marissa, based on the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so introduce yourself. Green. <laughs> she brought her own little fan club here. <laughs> So when did you accept Jesus? At the Reveal Conference. Yay! If you don't know what Reveal is, it's our women's conference. 
So conferences change lives too. Wherever God's presence is, lives can be changed. Okay, so what, what happened in you? How, how's your life been since you rededicate? Um, I had to give up a lot of things in my life and a lot of people, but God told me to trust him completely, and I did, and he blessed me in more ways than I could imagine. Amen. So are you going to serve Jesus all your days? All right, Kareem, based on the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. We are brave women, right? Amen. So... I'm Kim. Kim. <laughs> are, are you related to that girl? Yes, she's my sister. She's your sister. And when did you accept Jesus? At the Reveal Conference last year. Amen. And what did Jesus do for you? Um, he just opened my eyes a lot. Um, I did stuff I do regret, but I know he's forgiving and he still loves me. And I'm alive today because of him. Amen. And are you going to serve him all your days? Yes. All right, Kim, on the confession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we have... Zavon. <laughs> and why do you want to be baptized? I want to be baptized because I want to make a personal covenant with my Lord and Savior, so, yeah. Yeah, so go, go ahead. We're going to make sure his hair doesn't make him float. It's going to get all wet, all right? Zavon, based on the confession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alani. And why do you want to be baptized? Oh man, just um, a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff uh, happened in my life, so um, I just want to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, and um, He know I know He He will make everything better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I remember when you came back from the retreat, and at the end of your testimony, you said, "I'm getting baptized." And everybody cheered. So now we're here seeing it. Are you nervous? <laughs> so today we're going to baptize you. But, you know, God's going to do amazing work in you if you continue to stay close to him. Because he has great things. And he doesn't want you to look around and be afraid or get nervous, but he wants you to know that his confidence is inside of you, and he will be your strength, and he will fill your mouth with words that will draw others to him as you stand for him. You remind me, no, no, just, just a second now. See, you, you remind me of, of, of a, a young man that's got old now by the name of Pinball Clemens. You remind me of him, and he is a strong man of God that just loves the Lord and isn't afraid to, to share that publicly. So I just want to encourage you in that, my friend. Amen. Amen.
Yolani, based on the confession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, that's the end of our time together today. It was, did you receive from the Lord? Would you grab your connection card? Just look at the back side of it for just a moment. I want to remind you of some things that are there. There's some next steps that you can, you can do. You can get those verses down in your heart. But ask God to, to help you to know what to do with finances. And then decide to honor him in, in all that he's put in your hands. Invest in your future as well. But maybe today you ask Jesus, like some of these young ones did, to turn your life around, to change you. Would you let us know? Would you put a check mark there on that far side and let us know? And then if you did, bring the card out to the back of the foyer. And, and we've got a little uh, packet of information, a little booklet to put in your hands. And all of those that are first-time guests with us today, thank you so much for coming. Again, for you, I trust you put a check mark, said your first-time guest. Come also to the very end of the foyer. We have a coffee for you. Some of our leaders will be there. We also have a gift for you. Let's stand on our feet. The rest of us can put the connection card in the offering bucket at the door. And for all of the strong men that are here, we're going to stack the chairs up nine high so they're nice and neat, please, and pull them off the floor. We're leaving the stage up for the next month or so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, lift your hands in the air. Father, I thank you for each and every one here today. Thank you for each one watching and enjoying the baptisms and the testimonies. We just ask, Father, that you would lead us and guide us through the rest of this week, that you'd keep each and every one safe and out of harm's way. And, Lord, that your blessing would continue to overtake us. Help us to live in a way that touches the lives of others with your generosity flowing through us, we pray. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead singing.